Welcome to the inaugural episode of the Build It Better podcast powered by Framecat. If you're listening today, um, it's because of just a couple of things. It's either you've been told about this podcast or you have found it absolutely by accident because we're brand new. Um, we're actually a podcast that is going to be all about all things light gauge steel, cold form steel. Um, metal stud framing is what most people think of it as. And we're also going to talk about the utilization of that material as it pertains to building things better. Uh, industrialized construction, manufacturing, um, a new way to build, um, a new way to do things and do it better. This is brought about by the urbanization of the society that we live in currently and the fact that it's pushing us to build housing faster. It's pushing us to do things quicker. I go back to it. It is called the Build It Better podcast. It's all about getting um, a product, getting homes, commercial um, buildings, multifamily buildings. It's about getting those things to the market as quick as possible and having a superior product. For years and years and years, um, especially in the housing industry, and, and, and you can tell from the fantastic uh, quality of video if you're watching on our YouTube channel, that I'm an old geezer. So I was back uh, building things when we were doing it out of stones and rocks and, and things of that nature. But it, we've done it with wood for years and years and years, and it's worked. I, don't get me wrong. It is the way things are built in the U.S. at least. Wood is very predominant. However, um, wood is also has its problems. It, 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 it's crooked. It, it sometimes gets hard to get, hard to come by. The, the, the production of timber gets a uh, problem. So we have to find a better way to build, a faster way to build, to get the things to market that our society is pushing us or asking us or driving us to do. Industrialized construction and off-site constructing utilizing prefabricated components is the future of construction. Without a doubt, we can't do anything faster unless we build things off-site in a controlled environment. One of the big topics that you will hear us discuss often is the labor shortage. And it's not just a U.S. issue. It's a worldwide issue. Um, it's become much more prevalent since uh, COVID. However, it, it is an issue. Um, young people don't want to get into the trades anymore. So it means that as the, the older guard moves away from uh, getting out of the construction in the trades. They want to get into management. They want to get into other things. That old guard means that it's going away because nobody is coming in there after the fact and learning and going to take their place. So the best way to deal with that is in an offsite environment, a manufacturing environment where we can control the quality and we can do it in a temperature controlled. We can do it when it's 120 degrees outside. We can do it when it's 20 degrees below zero inside. It makes no difference. And we can perform those tasks and do those things uh, while site work, while concrete, while other things are being done on site. We're framing 60 to 65 percent of, of the framing is being done while other things are being done, which is much faster in the process than it would typically be done in, in traditional construction. Typical construction mean the means and methods that we have done for years and years are antiquated. It's, they're, they're full of opportunities for, for budget busts, for schedule busts. And so it's driven us 
and it's driven companies like Framecad to find and establish and build and dream methods, better methods to bring about the change that needs to happen within construction today. So one of the things that, that I hear often and that uh, many of you hear often when talking about uh, prefabricated light gauge steel building components is that it's new and, and you don't want to be first. And there's all these problems about being first. One of the things that we're going to deal with often and as a major part of this podcast is the fact to, to, that it's not new, that this technology, the FrameCAD system, light gauge steel has been around for dozens of years. Um, it, it's very prevalent in the Middle East, in Europe, in Australia, uh, New Zealand, um, other places around the world. When we get right down to it, the U.S. is last, which is mind-boggling, but even more so the Western U.S. So when you think about this, what we're trying to show you here and what we are attempting to share with you is that this is very prevalent and has been going on for a while. People have figured it out. It does work. There are hundreds of thousands of structures out there built right now with this very this exact method of construction so with all that being said we don't have an interview on this inaugural episode but i do want to share some comments from some other people in the business for instance james logue um, who is with an australian-based company called true blue steel frames I want you to hear what he has to say, and then I'll discuss that just a little bit after this comment. The design stage would be the most important part, in my opinion. We have a good reputation because of our product, and, and the only reason our product is good is because it was designed well. It all comes back to the design, and if it's designed right from the start, you're going to have a good product. What James points out here is the importance of the design phase in this system. When we're talking about doing things, off-site construction, industrialized construction, it is a design-led system. Your traditional construction, your general contractors, your people of that uh, in those in those parts of the business, are just getting plans that are done and they're they're putting bids together and they're building it. This system is a design-led system. It's very uh, high-end technology. It's making sure that you're doing all of coordination and the modeling up front and you're, you're finding clashes and potential difficulties before you ever start construction and many times before you've ever chosen contractors. So the importance of understanding that this is a design led system is paramount to understanding how to build better. Dennis Kotsu also with true boost, true blue, Dennis Kotsu, also with True Blue Steel Frames, talks more about the design and particularly the design software. Let's listen in. So using FrameCAD structure and detail art, it's very easy to use. We use that for the design phase of the build. So that's all the frame and truss designs. And then we take that over to Detailer, where we process that to a CNC format so it can go to the machines downstairs and get produced. So if we were to get it right here in the design phase, on-site frames may not be able to go together properly, trusses won't work, they might fail. So the design phase is very important to the actual product. So you see FrameCAD structure and FrameCAD detailer are, are integral components and, and you start with right away. 3D modeling, um, again, the, the coordination, being able to put together that, that building model and then disseminating that among your, your mechanical, electrical, and plumbing consultants very early on before they even start doing any drafting, d drawing, designing is, is the, the major win here. And then let's hear one more time from, from James Logue on the benefits of steel framing from his perspective. The biggest benefit for steel framing would be 
in today's sort of climate would be how straight it is. So, you know, houses are getting a bit more grand, they're not so basic anymore. And, and just the straightness of steel frames, the rigidity is probably, in my opinion, would be the biggest benefit it has. On top of the fact that they're termite proof and you know non-combustible and you know probably better for the environment in terms of you know 100% recyclable all of that but in just in terms of sort of pushing the envelope with design I would say steel frames definitely got um, got the edge I don't know if anybody caught that if it was just me or the fact that it's straight and how important the straightness is to the process those of you that build with wood know that you can build something and it looks great. You cut a band on a, on a bundle of lumber and you build a wall and it's fantastic. But it takes several weeks before you start covering that wall up with drywall. People are drilling holes in it. Uh, they're, they're stapling things to it. They're doing all kinds of things to it. By the time it gets to the point where the drywall is being installed, it, it's gone back to nature. You, you now have canoe wood in your home as opposed to building timber. So you have to go in and you have to shave, you have to cut notches in one side, you have to push it, you have to put more pieces and blocking in to make it straight. Many of you live in homes where they didn't do that and you know exactly what I'm talking about. So it's important to understand that it's straighter, it's stronger, and it's better, which is what we talk about often. I want to also have you listen in to Joe Trednick with Framecore. Um, he is a U.S. based uh, operator and fabricator, and he has this to say about why cold form steel manufacturing. We got into cold form steel manufacturing um, as a result of trying to find better building uh, methodologies, uh, mostly centered around uh, the labor shortage. We do a large percentage of the labor at the factory in a controlled setting. When the finished wall sections get out to the job site, we're using uh, laborers and not ne necessarily skilled labor. So we can do it with a superintendent, a lead carpenter, and then assemblers, as opposed to a full crew of carpenters. Some of the benefits of cold form steel are the accuracy and speed at which it can be erected, um, as well as the accuracy for trades that come in after the walls or the roof trusses are, are installed. Uh, for example, the uh, mechanical and plumbing runs can be uh, expedited much quicker because they're all pre-run and pre-punched, as well as like drywall finishers because outside corners are a true 90. We're not over mudding those corners to accomplish a good finish. Yeah, it's a, it's, you, 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 you hear it in Joe's voice. You see it in, in the things that he's talking about. When you are, are making a decision as a subcontractor, as a builder, to make investments, to build a business, what do you want to do? You want to go into something that makes it easier? Do you want to go into something that just brings along all the baggage that everybody has had to deal with for years and years and years? And so here you see why and what the driving force is that's pushing people, the, the, the subcontractors, the builders, to utilizing this technology. Ken Flynn also with Framecore talks about these benefits of a prefabricated building system. The benefit to the to the modular systems and to the prefabricated wall systems and trusses is, is you got a cleaner site, you got a safer site, um, you, you've got less people on site, less trades. It's also quicker because we do 65% of the the erection of the the framing here in the facility, so there's a lot less to do on site. There's a ton of benefits for for the site itself, and, and safety is the first one, but also cost. It is a little bias. Both of the people that you've heard from and the, and the other one that you're going to hear from here shortly are frame CAD operators, uh, frame CAD prefabricated panel distributors. I admit the bias. But these people were wood framers before they became steel framers. You're listening to people that were once in the wood business that have been won over to steel. Roger Ford with Frame Up Now, also a U.S. based uh, contractor and operator of FrameCAD, explains the FrameCAD system and how they utilize it. The system begins with a precise set of plans engineered within our system, and those specifications, when applied to FrameCAD structure in the detailer, produce a precise set of engineered parts. The home we're standing in right now has 3,700 individual parts. 
that make this frame. And every one is precise, and they all go together precisely. So it isn't because of any certain individual part in the frame CAD system, it's because of the collective parts in the frame CAD system which make it possible. Roger's a very interesting guy that we're going to have on a future episode. Matter of fact, many, if not all of these, these folks that you've, you've heard here and seen, if you're watching on our YouTube channel, will be on future podcasts. So tune in. We'll, we'll give you a heads up, but you'll, you'll know it in advance. But they will be joining us again. Brad Cooper, who's one of the co-owners at Frame Up Now, um, really gets into more of that wood framer to steel and what he has seen in making that change. Let's listen here. Uh, my name is Brad Cooper. Um, I am the co-owner of Frame Up Now. I've been building homes for about 25 years now as a general contractor, primarily in the residential field. Pretty much all of my work has been in, with wood. And once we saw the steel in the residential realm, it really changed the way we thought. It was a pretty easy transition. And now that we've done the transition into steel, I don't know if I would want to go back to wood. Um, there's certain factors that wood is very beneficial, but in the overall scheme of things, the steel is by far a superior product. So as you can see, we've touched on just a few things, and I just wanted to give you a bit of flavor of, of what kinds of things we're going to be discussing in this podcast. Uh, we're going to be showing you and exposing you to the world of light gauge steel. Um, we are going to have guests on uh, from Europe, the Middle East, Australia, New Zealand, uh, really all over the world. We want you to understand that you're not alone. This isn't something new that somebody has created out of the trunk of their car. And uh, the, guy that, the guy that's selling you watches out of his, out of his coat it's legit and it's been around for a long time. So with all of that being said, we hope that you would continue to spread the word. Um, talk about this to your friends, talk about this to potential developers, uh, and builders that may be thinking about, uh, building better home builders that are, are finding it difficult to find wood framers and, and to get their, their projects underway. Let's pass, let's spread the word. Let's make this something that you utilize as a tool to, which is exactly what we're doing it for, to spread the word, to make the awareness and build the awareness for this type of construction. I want to dispel one myth as I leave um, in a comment that I'm going to make. Good buddy of mine, J.J. Levinsky, um, who hosts Mac and Blue, um, ends his program with a quote from Walt Disney. So I was inspired by that, and I think that uh, I'm going to incorporate that from the get-go here um, and as it plays on a little bit of what I've talked about and the fact that the, one of the big stumbling blocks is that it's so new and that you don't want to be first and that all the problems that are inherent with this. So to share a little wisdom with the listeners and the viewers – I want to quote the, the very brilliant um, and inspiring Ricky Bobby when he says, if you're not first, you're last. So now, with all that being said, quit building it the old way and go build it better.